teleprompter, Dan. That would be really helpful. Good evening and welcome to the August 29th, 2016 meeting of the Town of Scarborough Planning Board. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the August 29th, 2016 meeting of the Town of Scarborough Planning Board. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Karen, could you please take the roll? Ms. Saunders, here. No. <laughs> we already have here. controversy yes. right out of the gate. <laughs> I'm not here yet. Mr. Bailey? Here. Ms. Ogliff? Here. Mr. Fellows? Here. Mr. Mazur? Here. And Mr. McGee? Here. Thank you. Uh, next item is approval of the minutes from the August 8th, 2016 meeting. All right. Uh, just been reminded that um, for the record, I need to indicate that. Mr. Bealey is a voting member this evening, so we're not quite a full board. He's our first alternate. Um, so the next item is approval of minutes from so the August 8th, 2016. So moved. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Item number four, the planning board will conduct a public hearing to receive comment on amendments to the Town of Scarborough zoning ordinance regarding multifamily housing in the Higgis Parkway District. The zoning ordinance amendment proposes to enable multifamily housing, buildings with three or more dwelling units, to be regulated in our Higgis Parkway District, HP, by physical size, maximum building footprint, height, etc., rather than number of dwelling units. Jay or Dan, would you like to introduce this one? Sure. I'm happy to, Mr. Okay. Chair. Um, and, yeah, this is an amendment in the Highest Parkway District, which applies to the Enterprise Business Park and also um, the land area on both sides of Highest Parkway in the center of town. And as you introduced, it's um, proposing to regulate the size of multifamily housing differently than it's regulated today. Um, already in the highest Parkway zone, multifamily housing is allowed for if it's part of a mixed project or mixed-use project. Um, so what that means is there can be some multifamily housing if it's part of a project that also includes some commercial development. And that was established three or four years ago to diversify what can happen on highest Parkway <coughs> and um, also to potentially induce development on the parkway. If there's some, some people and housing around that could help um, the commercial development side of, of the area. When the ordinance was um, adopted a few years ago um, to get at the scale, the size of multifamily housing, um, it was decided that it should be regulated by the number of units per building. And that uh, number was set at 12, which was used in some other zones. Um, like the board has considered over the last few months with some other zones and the town council has approved for some other zones to kind of to get away from regulating by the number of units um, because not all units are created equal. A one bedroom unit is much smaller than say a three bedroom unit. Um, the town has in a variety of zones started uh, regulating multifamily housing um, by building footprint and height and setbacks. Um, and so it, this is proposed to do the same thing on the Haggis Parkway uh, district as uh, was introduced. And due to the scale of development that's possible on Haggis Parkway and um, the location of the land, which isn't close to uh, many neighborhoods or other development, it was decided and is recommended that buildings, multifamily buildings can be up to 12,500 square feet. Um, which is um, consistent with kind of the industry uh, standards um, in, the, in New England around kind of suburban locations like Scarborough. Um, and 
it's also proposed that these buildings should be uh, no greater than three stories or 45 feet in height, and that's um, by and large the, the height limit that's been used for most residential um, development in town of Scarborough. Um, that's different than the height allowance currently for commercial development in Haggis Parkway. The Haggis Parkway was established, uh, district was established a number of years ago. At the time, it was visioned that potentially some office buildings could occur there that might be um, vertical type development, you know, six stories, 75 feet in height that hasn't bared out, at least um, so far. And though that's still the allowance for commercial development in the parkway, um, through discussions in our department with the town manager and SEDCO, um, the thinking here is that um, if we're going to enable kind of more multifamily in this zone, um, first, as a starting point, we should start with what's also allowed in other parts of town and not necessarily allow, you know, an um, apartment style housing that might be um, four or five, six stories in height, but more three stories, uh, again, that's been in keeping with multifamily allowed in other parts of town. So that's really kind of the background around uh, the, the zone change. Uh, like I said, it's a similar amendment to what we did in the TVC zone, um, the town and village center zone that applies to Oak Hill and Dunstan. And we did uh, somewhat similar amendments recently in some of our village residential zones. Um, the building footprints weren't as big in those areas because they're in um, denser areas, more compact areas where Haggis Parkway has a fair amount of developable land where you could probably site buildings of size and not, you know, could be out of character with where they are. So um, I guess that's my introduction and I uh, turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Dan. Um, I will open the public hearing for anyone who has any comments on this before we turn to any board discussion. I just ask that any, anyone who uh, has any comments just come up and introduce yourself, give your address and um, keep your uh, comments within five minutes. So with that, I will open the public hearing. Do we have any takers? All right, seeing no one, I will close the public hearing. Um, anyone on the board have any comments? Roger? Um, just uh, one question for Dan is, um, I, I, I basically agree with this, it makes total sense to me. Um, I, is it still going to have to be part of a greater mixed use project though, or could it be just a standalone? Uh, the current proposal is to still expect it to be part of a, uh, a mixed use project. Mm. Um, and so yeah, that's, that's okay. the current thinking. Um, there's, there is a project that could potentially locate in a contract zone that may not be that way, but um, right now that's the current thinking because it's, the parkway is still envisioned to be principally a commercial, a commercial area. Sure, okay. I'm fine. Yeah, thanks. Susan? Um, I'm in favor of this. Um, I'm on the Long Range Planning Committee, and we've been talking a lot about um, <clears throat> multiple family dwellings and how to make it as consistent as possible, understanding that different um, areas have different needs, and I think this is definitely a step in the right direction. Thanks. <coughs> Ron? Yeah, I agree, and I'm glad to see that some other things may be taking place on the Higgis Parkway. I think that that's been standing there a long time unoccupied and uh, I think this is a uh, good proposal for the committee that came up with it and I'd like to see it go forward. Thanks. Thanks, Ron. Nick? Oh, I'm in favor of it as well. So. Okay. Thanks. I'm also in favor of this. Like Susan, I'm on the Long Range Planning Committee and um, I can tell you there was um, quite a bit of thought that went into this and I do think that the um, going away from um, just sort of a bedroom limit to more of a square footage and um, height limit does provide more flexibility. The, the, the unit count can be kind of a blunt instrument sometimes and I think particularly in a zone like this where we're looking to provide some more flexibility uh, but still enforce those overall um, standards that this is a good approach. So uh, I think it's safe to say that the board is in favor of this and we've not heard any public comment, but um, we'll send a positive recommendation. Thank you. Thanks.
Um, before we move on to the next item, I meant to, to note that item number 10 on the agenda, Carmen Chapman's requesting a preliminary subdivision review for 34 New Road um, has been tabled. Um, and um, we may see that one hopefully at our next meeting. Uh, number five on the agenda is a consent item. Hospice of Southern Maine requests a reapproval of a site plan for 11 Lincoln Avenue, Assessor's Map R62, Lot 29B. Jay? Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. As you just noted, uh, this is for a site plan reapproval of the uh, Hospice of Southern Maine, sort of as we termed it at the time, their administrative offices that are at the intersection of Route 1 and Lincoln Avenue. Um, essentially, the original approval was from 2014. Um, the ordinance states that you have one year to get a substantial start, and if you don't get a substantial start in one year, the planner for good cause can provide a one-year extension. In the summer of 2015, the applicants, as they had discussed with the board in 2014, sort of about the, the difficulties they might have with fundraising and, and, and the long-term process that might take sort of made, made that case and uh, the plan department extended the approval for one additional year. That year has come up and so there's really no other alternative under our ordinance but for the planning board to um, review and uh, either approve or take action on the request to reapprove. Um, so at this point, as the applicant's letter states, they are seeking reapproval for the previously approved plan. Um, there was, there did appear to be a, a clerical mistake in the plan that was submitted with the approval. Was the the plan? It was the last plan that was submitted to the board before it got revised per board's conditions. Um, and so, um, it's, again, the letter was pretty clear in that they were looking for reapproval, but it might be worth just for purposes of record being clear on that point, but um, other than that, staff has no other issues or um, um, items to address. Thank you. Uh, is the applicant or the representative here? Good evening. Uh, for the record, my name is Andrew Johnson. I'm with Stantec and we're assisting Hospice of Southern Maine with their ongoing efforts to develop this site. Uh, as Jay said, this was originally approved in July 2014. We then came back for an extension after a year. Um, actually, once, just after the original approval was granted, Hospice of Southern Maine went through some fairly significant organizational restructuring, which is one of the reasons for the delay in, in their getting to, to uh, develop this property. But now they have gone through that process. They've emerged stronger. They have new leadership. They're very enthusiastic about the opportunities that this site proposes to them. Um, the Board of Directors has formed a committee <coughs> to re-explore some of the details of the development um, and just go over again what their aims and objectives are here. But they're very keen to move forward with this project now. Uh, Mary Pinto and Daryl Cady are here uh, to support their application and also a testament to the to the fact that they are very enthusiastic to move this forward. And we'd appreciate the board's consideration of reapproval of this plan. It would set them in good stead then to move forward with the fundraising. They'll have all their approvals in place and it'll just facilitate moving this project forward more quickly. If you have any questions, we're all available. Thank you. Does anyone have any yeah, questions? Yeah, I have a question. Um, according to the submission, uh, and I've heard everything you said, you think you say that they hope to complete the project within the next three or four years. Is that meaning completion of the project, or when do they begin want to begin the project? They would love to begin it as soon as possible, and, and Mary and Daryl can go into a little more detail in this, but um, what they want to do now is move the, move the project forward in a, in a sensible and measured manner, so their first step is to look at everything they have in place now, reassess what their needs might be and what their needs might be moving forward, make sure they have the plan in place that they want to have in place and then move it forward as quickly as they can. Obviously some of that is dependent on fundraising, some of it is dependent on decisions made by the committee and the board, but the intention is to move it forward as, as quickly as they possibly can. Okay. I guess I guess where I'm going with all of that is is it going to be another two years and then come back and ask for the same extension? Uh, Daryl can can maybe address that. I think we all hope not. 
But <laughs> Thank you. I'm Daryl Cady. I'm the CEO at Hospice of Southern Maine. And as Andrew said, our, our goal right now is to begin the project as soon as possible. We have already talked to uh, several individuals who would help us out with some of the fundraising. We have formed a subgroup of our board of directors, working group, and we've had a few meetings already, and um, we're very much looking forward to advancing the project to be completed, I would say to be completed within the next three years. Thank you. You're welcome. All set. All set. Thank you. Coming down here, Roger. I just have uh, just kind of curious. Is this designed to replace your present location on Route One? Okay. Okay. Susan. All set. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, I don't have any issues with this. I appreciate the the update, um, and certainly <coughs> she's the best of luck. And with that, I will make a motion. For approval, I move to reapprove the site plan of Hospice of Southern Maine with the acknowledgement that the findings and applicable conditions from the Planning Board's July 14, 2014 Notice of Decision remain effective. That's the motion. I'll second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Good luck. Item number six is another consent item. B&E Enterprises, Inc. is requesting site plan amendment review for Cobble Hill Trailer Sales, 148 Pleasant Hill Road, Assessor's Map, R78, Lot 45. Jay? Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. As you just noted, this item is before the board as a consent item. The board reviewed this at your last meeting, um, and the board seemed generally comfortable with the uh, basic parameters of the development. There were some detailed questions that needed to be worked out, and by and large have been, and have been reviewed by our civil engineer and, um, and our peer review engineer as well. Um, and their sort of remaining comments have been incorporated into a condition of approval. As board members will remember sort of the biggest hang up, if you will, was the requirement that the floor drains be registered with the state of Maine. That's a requirement of our aquifer protection dis overlay district, and that has been done. Um, and so with that, staff has provided board members with a motion for consideration. Thank you, Jay. Uh, the applicant and their representative here don't feel compelled to give a presentation, but just they, are, they do not appear to be here. I'm going to give that opportunity. Okay. I have a question. I don't know who to address it to. <laughs> There's nobody here. Um, I don't think I was... I don't think I understood clearly when the applicant was in front of us last. If you have your um, sketch, you know, your <coughs> surveyed, I cannot, your packet here, okay. The, the trucks that are now, the truck bodies that are presently, at the present moment, being parked um, so that they back up to Pleasant Hill Road, okay? They're shown to be continued to be allowed in that in that position. But we talked about not cutting down any trees, okay? At this point, the trucks are right up against the back, um, they're, they're parked in between all these trees. Between each two trees, there's a truck body. I was hoping that that wasn't going to be happening, and if you look at the drawing, um, the, the space that's being allowed for those truck bodies has pulled back from those trees by quite a bit. I don't see in anything that we have here that that actually has been written anywhere. And um, let's assume for the sake of discussion that it has not been. But the question then becomes, should it be actually stated? And if it should be stated, um, how do I say this? I have a truck driver in my family. <laughs> when you're getting back from a long trip, all you want to do is get rid of that truck body and go home. I'm concerned that even if we pull these truck bodies back from the trees, when it's at a certain time of night when you're backing those truck bodies in there, they're going to get too close to the trees. And so I'd like to suggest that they even consider putting some kind of a fence 
I don't know what, and I don't know how far back it would go. I think maybe if this has any value at all as a suggestion that maybe <clears throat> staff can help me in just what am I looking at here? How many feet back does this, does this now look like it is? Okay. Corey, can, like <laughs> can, I, can I maybe help? Absolutely. Would you? Um, Anything? Well, <laughs> in between where the pavement is shown, and like you said, right now they're parking in between those trees. Right. Um, is part of a swale which discharges to their um, soil bed, their filter bed. Mm -hmm. um, part of their requirement is to do annual reporting, which includes that four bay and it includes that whole swale area. So staff would be looking at it annually as well. So they can't be compacting that area and driving over that too. Is that the whole distance on North Bunny Hill Road? Well, you'll see um, it's on sheet four. Sheet four. Shows some contours in the sheet swale that is, is part of that system. And you can require more than that. I'm just giving the you, the, I guess, something we'll be looking at as well. The swale is before the things that are lined up to, I'm assuming, are parking areas, truck right. body parking areas. The swale is, is closer to Miami Drive. It goes the whole length of the pavement area. It's a fairly so shallow swale. It is, but it's yeah. hard. Uh, it, it's, um, I guess it's required not to be a compacted. It's also supposed okay. to infiltrate somewhat. Okay. So I think what I'm hearing from Angela is that at least once a year, the town will know if it's being driven on. Um, that doesn't. But a lot can two, happen in between. To, I to your that. point, I just that wanted to, yeah, yeah. I, so you so can require you, more than that. That's a great deal of clarity. I didn't have that before, and that's very helpful. Having said that, I still don't mm -hmm. think it's a bad idea to add a condition that some sort of, um, and we have to decide whether or not we wanted to do this, and if so, what kind of a fencing it would be, to keep to make sure that the parking does not occur there. I mean, it's going to help. <coughs> I'm, I'm making too big a deal out of this, right? No, and they are showing boulders around the soil bed filter for just, you know, part of that purpose, too, not pushing snow and all of that, and right. that, that can always be something that got okay. continued up that line. Right. There are sorry, boulders shown? Yes. Uh, well, not well, in those areas, not in that but area. those could be continued. They agreed to them around the soil bed filter, and obviously they're not here to speak to it, so... But it doesn't seem like a long stretch to throw some more along that edge to keep that from happening either. So, so I mean, there seems like there's a, a few options. It's the board does have concerns, uh, you know, understanding that there will at least be that annual inspection, but that annual inspection is that one time a year and won't pro prohibit the person who comes in who's tired and pulls back. So it seems like the board could think about a couple of things. I think, as uh, was already mentioned, that there are, I've tried to bring up the grading plan here. There are some boulders that were asked by to be put in place to protect the um, uh, the, the um, tension pond, the, uh, the tension area, um, the under drain area. Mm -hmm. So board could consider continuing those stones along. Though I don't know what type of impact that might have in this swale. Um, could look at potentially doing a, a split rail fence that, or you know, could request that there be intermittent curb stops, which that would, uh, I, that yeah. you see at the end of parking lots. Typically. Just as a point of order, I I, um, I don't know how far we can go with this without the applicant but here, and not that we would I necessarily wondering. get into a lot of back and forth on details, but um, I would just, I might suggest that we, to the extent we have concerns or suggestions, that maybe you can compile those, Jay, and take those back to the applicant. Otherwise, we're kind of just talking to ourselves and I, well, I, I guess I just sort of offer that it, yeah. the applicant doesn't need to be present for the board to take action. So if the board feels that there is something that they want to see, the board can make a condition of approval and the applicant not being here, notwithstanding, that's their condition of approval. Or if the board wishes to table it, that's at your discretion as well. But um, I do want to let the board know that there is no requirement that an applicant be here for any application. You can dispense of the information that's provided. Yeah, and, and I, do, I do realize that. I appreciate you pointing that out for, mm -hmm. for everyone's benefit. Um, and we can kind of decide as a board how we want to proceed. But I, I think we have a consultant in the audience that is in communication with the applicant that <laughs> <laughs> No, we're going to do it by self. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I mean, I think it's safe to condition with some flexibility on what the remedy is if the board wants mm -hmm. to. I mean, if it 
if there's options provided, so it's curb stops, boulders, or another, then it can be solved with this evening, potentially. I'm certainly, I'm not in any rush to, to table anyone or, okay. or not, not give the opportunity for approval, but I just. I would personally be happy with a condition of approval that you, you wordsmiths figure out how it says, <laughs> and, but leave the options as to what they will actually be. Any one of those three would be, make me happy. The fence, the boulders, what was the third one? Oh, the, uh, one of those the, concrete stops. actual stock. curb yeah. stops, right. And the applicant can choose whichever one they prefer. I'm not crazy about the cement thing, but that's just because I'm all about how it looks. <laughs> I've taken a crack at a quick, and I know the board has the, the draft motion with a number of other conditions. Um, I have taken a crack at potentially this might get the board where you're looking to go. Uh, a condition, I guess, would become uh, 1E would be, uh, so this is prior to issuance of the building permit that the, uh, sorry, let me see, prior to issuance of a building permit, the plans uh, be revised to provide adequate traffic measures between the front parking stalls and Pleasant Road, Pleasant Hill Road to prevent encroachment beyond the paved area. Is that? And just let could let the discussions about what that's going to be be with staff? If the board wants to dial it in as to what it is, then please do, or if did, you're did comfortable with staff reviewing what that measure is. what you just read say anything about staff involvement in which of those it would be? As long as it says with, with input from or with about decision to be approved made, by with staff? approved by staff, I'm fine with that. I don't think they have to come back here. And we don't have to tell them which one of the three to do, just to do something <coughs> in the staff Sure. So at this point, it would be 1E and provide adequate traffic, me maybe the, the traffic measures between the front parking stalls and Pleasant Hill Road to prevent encroachment beyond the paved area to be approved by staff. That's okay with me. Were there any other comments? Or no, I think that's good. Questions? Okay. Sure. Yeah, no, I, I don't have anything to add there, and um, I'm comfortable putting the conditional approval motion forward. I move to approve the site plan amendment application of VNE Enterprises, Inc. for the site plan amendment for property located at 148 Pleasant Hill Road, tax map R78, lot 45. The application includes site improvements to take place in three phases, including building expansions, stormwater facilities, site grading, and other associated infrastructure improvements. Conditions, number one, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall A, pay the traffic, traffic impact fees, total $3,147, B, shall secure a permit from the sanitary district, C, shall revise the inspection, maintenance, and housekeeping plan to ensure references and edits are correct, revisions to be reviewed and approved through the planning department. D, shall execute and record the maintenance agreement required by the post-construction stormwater infrastructure management ordinance. E, shall revise the site plan and set to provide adequate traffic measures between the front parking stalls and Pleasant Hill Road to prevent encroachment beyond the <laughs> paved. paved area to be approved by staff. Condition number two, prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy, all exterior site lighting fixtures are to be full cutoff light fixtures. And number three, a pre-construction meeting is required before the start of construction. The meeting shall include appropriate town staff, the developer and their contractor, and utility company representatives if applicable. The pre-construction meeting may be scheduled in coordination with the senior planner. Prior to scheduling the pre-construction meeting for the project, the applicant shall submit a notice of intent to comply with the main construction general permit with the main department of environmental protection and supply a copy of this document to the planning department. Second. That's the end of the motion. We have a second. <laughs> Any further discussion? No, all in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you, thanks for your help with that. Mm -hmm.
Item number seven, <clears throat> Good Pain LLC requests site sign review as required as a condition of approval for 362 Payne Road, Road Assessor's Map R38, Lot 4. Jay? Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think as you just read in the introduction uh, or the statement of what this is, it's um, yeah, when the applicant was for the board back in July, one of the conditions of approval was that they come before you with the final sign rendering for consideration and ultimately approval before moving forward. Um, so the applicant has provided that to the board for consideration. Not much to offer outside of that at this point. Thank you, and we well, note for the record we do have the, the design here in, in front of us, and um, we have the applicant. Welcome. Bill Soul, um, owner and operator of a top chimney. Um, Present time moving into 362 Payne Road, and uh, um, given, I met with Bruce Bailey, Bailey sign, and he wrote me up a uh, a picture and a, I guess he calls it a uh, a spec sheet of the sign I'd like to like to construct out in front of um, my business. It's going to be um, it's a it's a basic sign as you can see um, the the uh, the pillar that oh, the the post is going to sit on. It's going to be in a it's it's going to be hopefully look like a chimney when I get done. It's going to, it's going to be made of brick, as you can see. Um, and it'll just kind of fit into the, you know, to the A-top chimney. Um, uh, you, what I'm trying to get across is just a, you know, a, a real good plain looking sign. It's not going to be too flashy, but the, but I wanted to put brick in it because of the A-top chimney. It's, it's pretty, pretty simple. It's going to be a, um, that's going to be the base of it. Instead of having just hanging on a pole or a wooden post or something, I just wanted to construct. It will be on a pole, but I have to build a chimney around it. Okay. Thank you. Does anyone have any comments or questions on this? A question for staff. Mm -hmm. uh, the staff comments, number two, a second middle, I'll get it, middle paragraph. Staff has reviewed the proposed sign concept and has no further comment on the design at this time. And then it says board members may wish to reflect upon the provisions of the signage chapter of the design standards when considering the proposal. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what it was I was supposed to find when I was looking for the. The sign chapter has just a host of yeah. commentary about the way freestanding signs should look, the downlighting of lights. Again, yeah. we sort of, or I reviewed them. I didn't have any issues, but I was just if letting the board know what I had reviewed. Okay, because I don't have any issues with that either. I think it, if it turns out the way the applicant says it's going to turn out, it would be um, interesting to say the least. Yeah, no problems. Thank you. Anyone else? Roger? The only thing I had is that the last sentence where it says the code officer will verify the correct setback. Mm -hmm. Is that been all resolved? No. no I, I, I haven't applied for the permit yet. I okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, thanks. I'm fine. Anyone down there? No. Nice right, sign. Okay. Mm. No. Uh, I agree and appreciate you coming back, uh, making one more trip in front of us. And um, I think. Um, it's like it's going to be a nice sign, and I think the sheet does a good job of kind of illustrating the concept that you were talking about. And um, I think we do acknowledge everything else you're doing at the site there as well. Um, so I will um, put forward a very simple motion for approval. I move that the board approve Good Pain LLC's request for sign approval as required as, as a condition of approval for 362 Payne Road Assessor's Map R38, Lot 4. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. So just as a reminder, and I know you already mentioned it, Mr. Soul, but we will ask you that you work with our code officer to be sure you get the sign permit for installing. Just, thank you. Item number eight. Valentine Development requests an amended phasing plan for Eastern Village, Assessor's Map R73, Lot 21A. Okay. I think Mr. Bacon. Or is this a Dan? Sir, sure. I'll take a crack at it and then Jay can sure. finish up if need be. Um, this is a fairly simple amendment um, relating to two different aspects of um, trails or sidewalks in the project. Um, the Eastern Village project, as part of the original approval, original approval uh, was was and is to build a new section of Eastern Trail parallel with the Eastern Road. So rather than right now people using the Eastern Trail um, 
share Eastern Road um, with motorists, et cetera, when they get from the parking area up to Black Point Road. It's part of the Eastern Village project. Um, in currently, as it's approved, in two different phases, that trail uh, would be built uh, along Eastern Village between Eastern Village and Eastern Road. Um, the original phasing and approval was for part of uh, the trail to be built with phase three and then the other part built with phase five and the request is to move um, that second part into I think three phase three B um, so that results in the trail Eastern Trail being built earlier uh, in the project than the original approval the other proposed change is there was a short little um, different path or trail from um, Commerce or Commerce Drive, the intersection of Commerce Drive and Ballantyne down to um, part of the project that really went through the woods on, on an easement for the sanitary district for a sewer line. And the applicants proposing instead of doing that, that trail um, to donate the money that would have been spent on that trail to the larger Eastern Trail project that the town and DOT and Eastern Trail Management and District are working on to build um, the remaining section of the Eastern Trail from where it ends today near the Hillcrest Retirement Community um, into South Portland. And that's a major initiative the town's been working on for quite some time. Um, we're very close to uh, getting the requisite funding um, to move forward with that. And so there's an active fundraising campaign going on right now. And so that's we've been coordinating with um, Kerry Anderson, the developer of Eastern Village, on on that. And um, thought that that might be uh, potentially a better use of of um, develop his money to go towards that larger trail initiative than um, this little side trail that. Um, Essentially, it's not going to be used nearly as much as the Eastern Trail. So um, I think staff would uh, recommend um, both of those things be approved. The board is obviously amenable. Thanks. Thanks, Dan. Where do you do? Did it cover it all? I think you did all right. <laughs> um, Mr. Anderson is here. Would you like to come up and say anything else? Or you don't, don't feel like you have to, but... The only thing I guess I would add is that um, on the bottom. Thanks. The only thing I would add is that uh, the, the the design for the trail that Dan's talking about that goes from a paved section of the project up through the sewers and up to here. Originally it was part of what was going to be a second piece that went up to Route 1 through a piece of property we used to own along Commerce Drive. And through the transfer of uh, that parcel to the town, that particular trail section was eliminated. So it kind of almost, I guess, made the other trail somewhat mute. But we didn't really see the need for it. And uh, if we can put the money towards something that we feel is better, then that's what we're here to do. It's a pretty straightforward request, I think, with both of them, and we hope you uh, agree with us. Thank you. Um, we do have the opportunity for public comment on this, if anyone is interested. Seeing none, we'll go to board discussion. Mr. Chair, if I could just... Just as you close the public comment section, sure. board members will have received, I believe, one letter from uh, one of uh, Mr. Salisbury, I believe it is. Um, so I just wanted to make that noted as part of the public comment. Thank Supporting you. Supporting the idea. Supporting the idea. Supporting the idea. Right. Susan? Just one quick question. Uh, in, <coughs> in lieu of developing that piece as it was originally proposed, how do we determine how much money is going to be given to the well, as Dan suggested, it be used for the Eastern Trail on the other end. But, you know, who, who decides what that monetary value is? 
So Mr. Anderson developed his uh, estimate, and I can uh, maybe you can elaborate for the board no, I how we it came. I don't even know what it is. Oh, I just okay. want to know what's the process. Oh, the, oh, he, he I'm sent sorry. to the town. This is what his mathematics says it's going to be, and then the town at the staff level just says yes, we'll take it. I mean, I just want to know how it works. That's all. Uh, Mr. Anderson will provide um, the funds either, I guess, maybe, Dan, maybe you can answer. Are you talking about how is the value determined or where we put the money to dedicate oh. it? Okay. It's mine. Jay worked more closely on, with Gary on the cost, but I believe he had a proposal or two done of what the estimated roughing in of the trail was, and that's, I think, what was accepted by planning staff. Uh, in terms of where the money goes, the town is working with the Eastern Trail Alliance, which is the group that's advocating for the Eastern Trail completion, and there's a dedicated account that's specifically only for donations, and so that account only can be used towards the match um, to construct the trail. So, and there's a lot of other donations going into that account, and so it's isolated for that use. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? No? Roger? I have no. Down here? I don't think I have anything else either. It sounds like a good idea. A win-win, common sense solution. So uh, I will put forward another simple motion. I move to approve Valentine Development's request for amended phasing plan for Eastern Village, Assessor's Map R73, Lot 21A. As proposed. I'll second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor. That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item number nine. JDR Trust Two requests a sketch plan review for 25 Plaza Drive, Assessor's Map R58, Lot 32M. Jay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as board members, as you just noted, this is a sketch plan. It is in the TVC district. The intent of the sketch plan is to enable an applicant to present a concept for development to the board uh, such that the board can understand the type, scale, scope of the project. And uh, so the board can provide the applicant with some initial feedback in terms of their design and, and what their proposal is. To that end, you'll receive staff comments as well as comments from our town engineer um, and an email from Mr. Bacon regarding the, the proposed design, referencing um, many of the sort of uh, standards, applicable standards of the TVC district, um, the purpose and, and, and sort of the town's uh, ordinance's vision for the TVC as in terms of being a village area, sort of uh, high density, a lot of amenities to um, make it uh, enhance the streetscape and the pedestrian movements and multi-mobility multi, uh, through through the site. Um, so with that, as I said, you'll received our comments and had an opportunity to read through those, and I'll turn it back to you, and staff are here to answer questions as they may arise. Thanks, Jay. And I will turn it over to the applicant. Uh, good evening. I'm Steve Berg, the trustee for JDR Trust Two. I have Kylie Mason here from Sebago Technics who will go through the actual planning process we looked at um, and address a lot of the comments that came back from staff. Um, it's a further development, redevelopment of Oak Hill Plaza um, on some vacant land that's there now. Um, when we come back for um, site plan review, there'll be a lot more additional information added. But at this point, we just want to see, you know, get feedback from the board, their thoughts. Um, on these ideas we had for some land developed along Plaza Drive, which runs from Route 1 down towards Hannaford Drive. If you're coming in from the Route 1 side, it would be the land on the right side of the road as you head down towards Hannaford Drive. And with that, I'll turn it over to Kylie um, for further comments. Okay. 
Um, is this working okay? Yep. Okay, so just to give you guys an orientation, this is Route 1 right here. This is McDonald's. Jennifer Drive would be out here. We did bring in the uh, moved out one, so just to give you context here, this would be Route 1, Jennifer Drive, uh, you have Jennifer over here. One of the things that we posed early on was uh, an extension of this kind of pedestrian spine through here, which then connects over to this way. We have some grades along this section here and in here where we thought it would be more difficult to extend on this side, but we do have comments from Dan and Jay about extending the sidewalk on, on this side of Route 1 towards the building. And so. Anything else? No? I, okay. I was just trying to think if there's anything I wanted to add, but I'd rather respond to questions and get direct okay. feedback. Sure. Thank you. Nick, would you like to start? Sure. So on the uh, building to the left, my left, uh, you said might be residential units, you're considering residential units on the... On the second story. Second story. Would you be dedicating the parking, do you have intentions to dedicate parking, assigned parking spots, reserved parking spots for anyone that lived there, or is it 
based on anywhere they can find a spot over there. Um, given the size of the parking that we're proposing, I think they'd be all right in the non-peak okay. hours, but we can, if it would be desirable, we can certainly assign parking. I was just curious. Um, yeah, it's probably a little far ahead of I'm of sure it's way far ahead <laughs> where we are, yeah, but right now. <laughs> when you hit said residential, it just, sure. just, just triggered the thought that if I had to bring my uh, my laundry into my apartment, uh, where was I going to be parking my car? Sure. <laughs> The things you think of when you're sitting here. Anyways, um, I I do like the idea that you're you're going to be moving the the uh, proposed bank building forward. I think that's a good idea. I, you know, aligning that McDonald's driveway is. Um, I I don't know I don't know how to interpret that. I mean, I there's a lot of traffic that goes through there on a. I believe there's a lot of traffic that goes through there. At least when I've traveled through there, there seems to be a lot of the cars out there with me. Um, going through the McDonald's exit or going on the road? Uh, just that, down that, that road. So aligning those two driveways, I'm not sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing. If it's, um, I don't know. I guess that's where you ask for traffic studies, right? <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm excited to see what you're going to, which you'll come back with once everything shifts, where everything will kind of get moved around to. I think that will help me visually understand where you are with the project right now. Um, can you clarify something for me on the existing building? Are those loading docks in the back of the existing building? Over here? Yeah. They're um, entry doors, like service doors, but they're not like a tractor trailer loading. Okay, so area. you don't expect any of. No, any you, wouldn't, you wouldn't have the depth to come in this way, but certainly um, you we want to make room that a truck could circulate into the back just to a fire lane. A fire lane, yeah. okay. <coughs> I think that's it for right now. I am I am excited to see what happens when you start shifting things around, how it all falls together. Um, it's nice to see some work done. I, I think um, this is one of those projects where this is going to be music to Corey's ears, where I think the sidewalks, you know, <laughs> um, I think the sidewalks are a big part of this because that that area, the, the vision for that area is people to be walking and businesses to thrive and have that nice community feel to it. So, thank you. Thanks. Susan? I think it's very exciting. We've been waiting for something to happen with this for a long time. So I think it's a good sign for the economy in Skybro. You people don't do things as you, if you... I'm sh pretty sure you're not going to be throwing good money after bad. Uh -huh. I think it's a sight walk, definitely. I agree. Definitely a sight walk. At first blush, I would much prefer to see the building to the right mm -hmm. come down so that it's more in line with the other new, than, than be co too concerned about the lining up of McDonald's. But I'm not a traffic engineer, so again, we'll see what the traffic engineers say. Um, I'm encouraged by the drawing that shows all kinds of street trees. Yes, let's hear <laughs> the street trees. Um, I want to refer to Dan's letter to us, which I'm sure the client, uh, the applicant already got from the 25th, um, because you're already doing a lot of what it is that he's recommending, and I just want to go on record as saying yes, definitely, that the, the, the design of the building, street trees, location, I really like the idea of the sidewalks as many is it can possibly be in street parking. Until Dan had put that down, I never thought of it. But it would be a perfect place to try to do some street uh, parking. Mm -hmm. to, to bring the general awe of what goes on there down, because I spent a lot of time in that area. And people do go faster than they should down that road, hoping, just hoping beyond hope that they're somehow going to make it across Route 1 <laughs> when there's no intersection, right? And, and no lights and no nothing. They're just going to do a Hail Mary and <laughs> take off. Um, if we just, anything that can be done to make it look like it's a calmer, go more slowly, put up signs that say, go slowly, <laughs> whatever, I think it's just very, very important. Um, so, again, this is a golden opportunity. I like what Dan said about... Um, People are deciding to locate in Oak Hill because it's potential for becoming more comfortable for people, not just cars. So anything that can be done to to support that, and I can see that you basically are in agreement with that. 
And then, of course, last but not least, is this, um, when you're in the middle of this process, looking for the potential for future interconnections, right? It's fairly obvious that that's going to happen, but taking a look at it at this stage, coming up with some ideas, some suggestions of how it might look, it's a golden opportunity again to sort of start that process going. So yay, looking forward to having you come back. Thank you. Thanks. Roger? Thanks. Um, I think it's kind of exciting as well. Um, one thing that um, struck me when I looked at this was all the high top, the and, you know, asphalt's everywhere. Oh, yeah. And <clears throat> um, I'm just kind of curious, um, besides this particular project, are there any plans to do anything else with any on, on the rest of the property? Um, at the current time, this no, is... Not the current time, but I mean... Like um, with a project of this size, I mean, at the future, you know, down the road, I'm sure some of these other buildings will be redeveloped. We've looked at it in the past, um, but again, it's a long-range process. So this is why we took you know, this chunk um, of land with the vision for this area. Hopefully, that will create some of these other buildings that want to re redevelop those in the future. Um, but that's you know, we feel this is a good section to um, you know, and redesigning the existing buildings there, the L-shaped building you see there, with some more facade treatment, so it brings up the length of that building as well. Um, as far as other land holdings, I mean, a lot of the other land we own is already um, in wetland areas, so it's hard to develop further down the road of our holdings. So, I mean, this is where we're looking at now for potential redevelopment. And you know, a few years down the road, there might be other buildings that, you know, opportunities that come up. I was just thinking that this has developed over the decades. Right. Literally, you know, and um, I don't know. I was just kind of curious. Do so you have like a master plan that, <laughs> even though you may not be planning to do something like within the next five years in a certain area, but you could see in the future um, redeveloping a, like a building, that, you know, something like that, just just to make the overall site. Uh, it just seems like there's an awful lot of, you know, uh, asphalt all, all over the place there, and there's a lot of cars driving in all kinds of different directions. I mean, it's a very busy place. There's no doubt about it. Sure. Um, I mean, one of the reasons is a lot of asphalt is because the zoning requirements require that much parking okay. out there. Okay. Um, so, I mean, um, we've done things to, you know, put some wayfinder signage out there. Um, and, uh, you know, as we've developed the past 10 years, for instance, you know, there's been a lot of thought going into it. Going back and removing existing buildings, um, right now, you know, the economics don't support that sure, type of development. So we just to draw pretty pictures and tell it to you, say, oh, this is what we would like to do. Um, the economic reality isn't for that, they are right now for that. Um, but by being able to do a plan like we're doing here, that can show what further development can come on, you know, existing stuff, redevelopment. Mm. I mean, I commend you and, um, you know, um, the Ritolos for everything you've done there. I just think it's such a signature location in the town. Uh, <coughs> anything, anything you can do to enhance the, um, you know, the, the appearance of it, um, it just would, would greatly enhance the value of the property too. Sure. No, so, but I, I think it's pretty exciting. So you're pretty. It sounds like you're pretty sure that it's going to be like a bank on that. Yeah, I mean that's what we're proposing. We're coming back, obviously. Are there any Are yeah. there any banks still left to run? <laughs> Plenty of rep not represented in town currently. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess I don't have any other further questions at this point. Thank you. Um, I agree. This is exciting, and as Susan said, this is a golden opportunity. And every once in a while, we get a chance to look at one of these um, sites that you know such a critical part of the town um, and I'm definitely encouraged to hear that you're you're amenable to you know, moving moving the building up and doing the doing the on street parking and looking at sidewalks and um, I will echo Susan in saying I hope that you can also look at future interconnectivity and that's, that's obviously a big part of that puzzle that you've been looking at and working on for years and you know we did 
um, you know, you did some incremental improvements a few years ago with the wayfinding signage and some of the lighting and other things, and so I think it's definitely moved in the right direction, and obviously, as you alluded to, economics are behind just how ambitious you can be with any one project, but um, this is exciting, and I'll look forward to seeing, you know, as Nick said, sort of what this, how it reads and how it feels and looks once you've made those shifts. Um, I would suggest that um, we do plan a, a site walk. I mean, we, we, we typically, I think, tend to think about site walks more when we're talking about more kind of rural or residential projects that we're, where we're trying to visualize something that's not there yet. Um, this is a little different. It's something that all of us see probably every day and maybe multiple times per day, but I think because there's so much going on there, it would be helpful to walk around once we have the revised, more fleshed out site plan in hand and just kind of walk around and look at how things line up and think about, um, you know, what how it's really going to work. Uh, I think that would be really helpful. Uh, in terms of the the, uh, the aligning of the curb cuts, I agree that that's, you know, that there's some ambiguity there and I guess we'll, we'll look in part to see what traffic studies show and just how, how big of an issue that might be. Um, my gut feeling is that on balance it's going to be better to have to be able to slide things over. Um, although it's more conceptual at this point, as you said, I, I also think it's exciting that you're thinking about potential residential component because that's, I think that's one big missing link right there, obviously. Anytime you talk about having a town village center, um, to really make that happen, you've got to have some residential. So that would be great to somehow make that work at some point. And I'm glad that you're already thinking in those terms. Um, beyond that, there are all the usual, the kind of usual laundry list of items for that we always kind of throw out a sketch plan and looking forward to seeing for the more flushed out site plan. So, you know, things like lighting and, um, you know, some of the interconnectivity, some of the circulation details and, and things like that. Um, and we'll just look forward to seeing that and we can walk around together and hopefully um, see it come together. Uh, beyond that, I don't really have anything else. I think the board in general has pretty much captured it all, and hopefully that's helpful to you in terms of feedback at this stage. Very much so. Okay. Roger, do you have something yeah, else? Just, just one quick question. Uh, do you have any insight as to what's um, happening with the Greystone building? Um, who, who owns it now? Or? Yeah, that's owned by the Foley family. Oh, the Foley's? Um, okay. They have some conceptual plans that they've been working on. Um, we've talked to them back and forth with other proposals, but um, at this point, it looks like you know, we're not able to have any agreements with them. Okay. Okay. Um, Thank you. Sure. Mr. Chair, if it's possible, um, we'll certainly work on developing another concept, um, but we won't have uh, fully fleshed out plans for a little bit. This is not a... Yeah. Uh, this isn't on a fast track. So, and mm -hmm. with winter coming, mm -hmm. would it be possible to schedule a site walk in advance of the next application just to yeah. have the site walk? I would say so. I, as long as I think we've kind of identified what the what the parameters and the variables are and you know if you have maybe a revised sketch that would be helpful but if, yeah. if not that's in the interest of getting out there and and walking around I think that would be fine. Right. Would the next one be 919 the deadline for sketch? Sounds about right. Our next meeting is September 19th. Okay. Yep. And we can work with you on terms of the timeline for the site walk. Typically, we site walks happen at different times depending on what we're looking at. And I think, you know, as, as the chair indicated earlier, this, this would be a little bit of a unique site walk for the board, whereas typically we are walking into the woods and there's a road alignment where here a lot of those elements are there. So. Um, I think I'm hearing from the chair and by nodding of heads of the other boots. <laughs> may not need the boots this time that I think you know if we just have a, a, a sketch that may put the building in, right. in consistency and conformance with the ordinance that we may be able to get out there sooner than later okay. be happy to work with you off offline on that yeah. and schedule Thank that you. through the board okay. anything more from us Thank you Thank you.
Uh, as mentioned previously, item number 10, Carmen Chapmas requesting preliminary subdivision review for 34 New Road was tabled. Um, uh, Jay can give us a brief update on sort of the context there and where that stands. Sure, just wanted to give the board a quick update. You do have before you a memo from Normando Associates. It's sort of an interim memo. They've conducted their first review. Um, we're actually going to be meeting out on site on Thursday with a state uh, soil scientist to um, come to some agreement or um, to review the project uh, more fully in terms of the wetlands delineation. Um, and as uh, as we had, uh, as the board had asked, I guess I meant to say, uh, the applicant did provide that alternative road analysis. And so, um, based on that discussion, waiting for some of our uh, state agencies to weigh in on the um, different natural uh, constraints, resources, and characteristics, and their determination of sort of higher values, so to speak, of the uh, ver various uh, and, uh, items that are out there. That's it. Thanks, Jay. Is there a town planner's report? Not from me. I, I guess I would usually handle this, right? <laughs> yeah. I guess I would just note for the board that we did. Re um, staff has reviewed two items for a pre-application review that you'll probably be seeing at either your next meeting or in the coming meetings. One is for, uh, uh, I believe, it's for Southgate Road, which is the recent rezoning on Southgate Road that went from uh, B3. It was, I believe, the industrial district. That parcel they've submitted, and so we've done one round of staff level review. So. Presumably, they'll be revising plans and coming back. Uh, we also have begun reviewing uh, the project, the Dunstan Village, um, the, the Route 1 component, uh, commercial mixed-use component to Dunstan that the board did, the site plan and master plan review of the three-step plan development process going back almost a year ago at this point. Um, they're now uh, beginning to develop their formal site plan subdivision application material. So we have done one round of review of those as well. Um, so just give you a heads up on a few things that you may be seeing. Thank you. Do we have an administrative amendment report? One item to report um, out at the Fish and Game site. Uh, um, they are uh, had a request to bring in some fill from a project that's happening in Portland. Kapisic Pond is being dredged out, and they're bringing some fill in to add to some of their berms that protect drivers from falling shells, which <laughs> the, a good the chair seemed to deem as a good idea. It's really not it's not changing the site in any, I mean, um, they're not adding any more shooting ranges or anything to that effect. It's really enhanced safety and um, so staff reviewed that, again, with the chair's blessing and uh, uh, provide administrative approval. I am pro not getting hit by a falling shell. <laughs> <laughs> Um, any planning board correspondence beyond what was already referenced? We have the, the Normando Associates memo that you just mentioned. We also had an email from a neighbor uh, regarding the Eastern Village yep. I think that's it. proposal that was supportive of, of that. Okay. Any planning board comments? Yes. Susan? I have two. All right. Um, I'd just like to again say that I thought our uh, workshop before the, this meeting was, was definitely worth the time and want to go on record as saying, you know, at least a couple more times a year we should do something like that. I also want to say thank you to Dan for the letter he wrote to the Press Herald, right? Wasn't hmm. it the Press Herald? About the, um, which you were mentioning tonight, the Eastern Trail and how much money we've already raised and asking people to contribute so because it's a matching amount that we need. Um, it's an incredible accomplishment that we've done as a, as a state, let alone each local community has done. And, and because we're so dedicated to our marsh here in Scarborough to have done as much as we've done, I mean, we just need to make sure that we get a lot of publicity for this. And thank you, Dan, for doing that. Sure. That'll do it. Thank you. Roger? Uh, two things. Uh, do you want a secretary's report? <laughs> <laughs> don't have one. <laughs> no one put it on the agenda. Okay. Um, I, I think it would be uh, worthwhile mentioning uh, Mike Woods, Mike Wood, leaving the board and uh, taking a job. I, he's done a great job, you know, as a, you know, serving the town in, you know, number of capacities and uh, we're going to miss him. So. Absolutely. Yeah. 
That's it. Thank no you. report. Put you on the spot next time. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'll echo what Susan said about uh, the workshop. It was helpful, and I, I do hope we have more, a little bit more regularly. Um, and uh, I'd also like to acknowledge Mike Wood's service to the town, two different stints with the planning board, as well as the town council and a number of other activities. And I'm glad to know that he's maintaining his residence here in Scarborough, and he still considers himself a Scarborough resident, so he will be watching us, and I'm sure he'll be back. Um, and uh, with that, I will move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Thank you.